Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm back to making videos after kind of like an extended break from YouTube. I haven't really been on YouTube since like the end of February, right before my Maldives vacation. And it didn't really feel right to just jump straight into uploading videos again without kind of like addressing why I took this break, especially since part of the reason that I've kind of been away from YouTube recently is related to what I feel like is a very popular topic of discussion within the luxury community these days and that is you know is the community dying there's so many changes going on within this luxury space and I just wanted to share kind of like my thoughts on the whole situation so this is kind of like a life update video and I did also promise you guys that I would do a Q&A about my Maldives trip so I'll talk about that first um so in early March my husband and I went to the Maldives to celebrate kind of like our five-year anniversary it was like an early celebration and it was amazing and actually on our flight back we actually met one of you guys so if you're watching this video then hi um and it was funny because she didn't just recognize me but she also recognized my husband from his appearances in the husband ranks my handbags videos here on my channel um we've done two of them together and he was so embarrassed um if you've watched those videos you'll know why he was so embarrassed um if you're interested in knowing why we're watching those videos then i'll leave the more recent of the two linked up here for you guys um, so anyways, it was an amazing trip um, and I kind of like posted some stories about it um, like after we got back on Instagram but I haven't really talked about it here on YouTube until like just two weeks ago I posted kind of like a vlog about it um, but yeah, I've gotten questions from some of you guys about the trip in general um, so I just wanted to kind of like answer your questions in this video um, so I have the questions jotted down here um so the first question is how did you decide on the resort and the island um so we stayed at the waldorf astoria i'll leave like the complete name of the resort which includes the name of the island um i'll leave it somewhere on the screen because i don't want to butcher the name of it um and it was so hard doing research and trying to narrow it down to which resort we wanted to stay at there was like so so many resorts in the Maldives and they open like a bunch every single year too um so it was so overwhelming doing this research I think like after a while everything sort of like blurred together and I couldn't even like remember what was like special about like a specific resort because like all the names were just like blurring together to me um but I think for me personally um food was very important um so i wanted to go to a place where there was a lot of different options for restaurants with like different cuisines and the other thing that mattered to me was i wasn't sure if i wanted to have to like hop onto like a seaplane to get to um the resort because like a lot of the resorts like after you land um in the Maldives, like their main international airport, you have to take like a seaplane to get to the actual resort. And there's limitations to when the seaplanes can run, like they can only run in the daytime, it doesn't work if it's like rainy weather. I know like some people think it's like part of the whole Maldives experience, but for me, I was just like, this doesn't seem like a fun ride to get on. And then like some resorts actually, um, you have to take kind of like a um, domestic kind of flight to a different island and then you take like a speedboat from there so overall it's a lot so basically I was like mm, I'm not sure if I want to take a seaplane and I most certainly do not want to have to transfer to a domestic flight and then get on like a speedboat after that um, so when we were looking at the Waldorf Astoria Resort, um, they're actually close enough to like the main island where the international airport is that they actually have their own yacht that of course it's not free, but basically you just get on their yacht and then like they take you directly to the island and that's it. It's much simpler than like getting on a seaplane, which I believe um, since seaplanes aren't run by the resorts themselves, 
those sequins actually could make like multiple stops. So I was just like, okay, everything about this resort just sounds great because they have like a good amount of restaurants there too. So that's what we decided on. And yeah, I think we made a great choice. So the next question is how much was everything? Flights, hotel, food? Um, and this was a very very expensive um vacation so the flight um for the everything is going to be for two people so my husband and i um so flights cost us um just under 10 grand and as for the hotel so this is the room itself it was around 2800 a night and oh by the way all of this is going to be in us dollars it's like the even in the maldives it's like the default currency that they have for like their menus and everything Thing. So it was 2800 a night and then on top of that base price you also have to pay like approximately 16% in tax and also they tack on a 10% service charge so you have to like factor in an additional like 26% to like all the prices you see on anything there which is kind of insane because that, that's a lot. Um, so we stayed there for six nights so after like um, the tax and service charge um, it came out to approximately like 22,000 um, for the room and we stayed in one of the overwater villas which was like the second um, tier of pricing they have so the cheapest option is actually the reef villa and um there's honestly not that much different aside from the fact that like i feel like the maldives is kind of like known for the overwater like bungalows villas whatever so we really wanted that experience um but if you went with the reef villa that would have been more like 2300 a night um and then they also have like the beach villas which I think those cost $3,100 a night. Um, so yeah, it was about $22,000 for the room itself. And as for the food, I think we spent between $3,000 to $3,500 throughout the entire stay on food. And that's inclusive of um, the tax and the service charge. And this was for two lunches and also dinners throughout our entire stay. And we don't really drink um, alcohol, so we didn't have to pay the exorbitant prices for alcohol, but we did get like mocktails. Um, so that includes like the prices for like the mocktails, which was like about like 16 to $18 um, base price for like each glass basically. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about like the meals that we had to pay for um, because that's like part of the next question. Um, but first I wanted to mention that I don't know which category um, this belongs in for this specific question, but whether you take like a seaplane or the speedboat or like in our case this like yacht that's owned by the resort, that also costs money and like you can't get out of that fee like you just have to do it. Um, so for the yacht that we took, it was like, I want to say like $800 a person for like a round trip. So from like the airport to the resort and then back to the airport at the end of your trip, it was like $800 a person plus that 26%. Um, so I don't know say it's like about a thousand dollars per person so i think like overall for the entire trip it was probably like just under forty thousand dollars altogether um and yeah that is a lot of money um you could definitely do like a maldives vacation for less than that and you can definitely spend much more than that too so there's really like a large spectrum for how much such a trip would cost um, so the next question is, was it all inclusive or do you still need to pay separately for meals? So we chose to just like pay separately for all our meals, um, but they did offer like a half board option and that basically gets you a dining credit of 155 US dollars per night. Um, so that is 121.47 plus like the tax and service charge so everything comes out to 155 and you could spend that on dinner um but it's like limited to which restaurants you can go to and then that also comes with um breakfast included too um so they have their breakfast buffet so you basically don't get lunch 
um, they don't offer like a full board option and it's not all inclusive. Um, but we decided not to go with the half board option because we wanted to go to like a bunch of different restaurants and close to like half the restaurant that we wanted to go to were excluded from the half board that they offered. So in some ways, it might still be worth it even if you don't use the dining credits like every single night um it might still be worth it for some people but for us um since we were like hilton gold members so the waldorf Astoria is part of like the hilton like conglomerate so we had hilton gold which already comes with free breakfast so we weren't going to you know like make use of like the value of this half board option like for the free breakfast um so yeah we just decided that it didn't really make sense to pay for this um it made more sense to just like pay for what we wanted to eat like as we ate it and the next question is did you book through a travel agent or through the resort so we actually booked through like the resort um because we tried to book it through Amex Travel and for some reason it didn't let us um, like proceed with like the booking. I don't know what exactly it was. We even like called into one of the agents and it didn't work either. They weren't able to push it through. And also another one of the strange things is that um, when we were looking at like the Amex Travel, um, portal there was like this extra charge i can't remember what it was named but there was like this extra charge um that actually like made it more expensive to book on amex travel we thought it might have been for like that um like yacht transfer but after talking to like the hilton people they said that that was like something separate so it was all very confusing you know we just decided to like book it on the hilton website instead just because like everything was more like laid out in front of us um maybe we didn't get the best deal for it but i guess like oh well <laughs> it happened um and the next question is are the showers in the water hut salt based um and honestly i don't know I was using like the water in the sinks to like rinse my mouth when I brush my teeth and there is sort of like a little bit of like a salty taste to it I want to say like I don't know like maybe I was imagining things but I think there was sort of like a salty taste to it um and another thing I wanted to mention is that like after coming back from the trip my hair was like so dry <laughs> so it probably had to do with the fact that I was like swimming in the ocean with the salt water and like even in the pool with like the chlorine um, and just kind of like washing my hair more often. Maybe the water in the shower was doing some damage to my hair too. It could have been the shampoo also. There's so many different like variables but yeah I just wanted to mention that like my hair did end up being like a little bit more damaged than I would have liked it to be. Um, and next question is what was your favorite food there um and almost like all the restaurants were pretty good um there was probably just one that i was kind of like mm, like it's really nothing special um but aside from that everything was pretty good um but favorite food i'm going to just mention like i guess like the most interesting food that i had there so they have like their own type of lobster in the maldives like the maldivian lobster and it's totally different than the lobster that i'm used to the meat didn't have that sort of like reddish color that i'm used to and also it was just like a different texture i don't know it was just like a different experience um if i didn't know that that was lobster i probably wouldn't have realized but that was interesting so the maldivian lobster was like something different that i guess you can really only get there also i want to mention that the food there is crazy expensive it's like every time you get um like an entree dish it's like 70 dollars or so um and yeah so with like the 20 something percent of like tax and service charge that's like a hundred dollars for just an entree yeah it that's why everything added to like four thousand dollars um for for food basically um and then how does it compare to other typical places you've been and 
the Maldives is special. Like, no doubt about it. It's really special. This was like the first time we've stayed at an overwater villa. That was very unique. But in a way, I also feel like I kind of enjoyed going to like Hawaii, for example, a bit more where you were able to kind of like venture out and like explore more things and not being just like trapped on an island. Um, so the next question, actually the final question is, would you go back? Would you recommend going? If you haven't been to the Maldives before, I definitely do like recommend going at least once. It's just such a special place. And yeah, it's just overall a very amazing experience. Um, and it's kind of like a bucket list experience. There's not many places in the world that are like it. So yeah, I would recommend going, but I'm not sure if for me it would be a place that I would like constantly go back to. Um, on our flight there, like the second leg of our flight there, we were sitting next to this couple who had been to the Maldives, like different resorts um, within the Maldives. Like that was like their at least like fifth time going. They've been going there since like I think the 80s. It's different for different people, you know, like they obviously really enjoyed it there. Um, I think they're like, not quite as far as we are from the Maldives, they're from England. Um, so yeah, I think it's like a matter of like if you like that type of really like isolated like island vacation type of vibe and also like how far you live from the Maldives, yeah that all kind of factors into whether it would be like a place that is like a go-to vacation spot for you. So after coming back from the trip, I feel like I had a string of horrible luck. Um, I had some health issues that I had to deal with, not really going to go into detail on that. Um, and also there was like a leak in my home too. And yeah, that was also very unpleasant, just tagged on to all the other stuff. Um, just was not a great few months. But even after, you know, all the things in my personal life were largely dealt with, it was still hard to find the motivation to come back to making YouTube videos. Um, so I've kind of just been like a spectator in a way um, these past few months. And what I've largely noticed is that luxury YouTube is moving in two very different directions so on one end people are kind of like decluttering just getting rid of all of their luxury bags and accessories and just kind of like more embracing minimalism and then on the other end there are people that are like going on the Hermes journey there is kind of like one little sector of the luxury community where like those two ends kind of intersect so you have you know people who are selling all their bags and then you have the people who are buying a bunch of Hermes stuff and then you have the people who are selling all their bags with the intention of only owning Birkins and Kellys and just I can't relate to that. I guess I'm more closely aligned with the people who are like decluttering everything because prior to my vacation, you know, going to the Maldives was kind of like the furthest we've traveled in a long, long, long time. Um, so, you know, I kind of had to like get everything in order before traveling, kind of make sure everything is safe. You know, all of my stuff is insured, security at my home is fine and everything um so i wasn't really worried but you know you still want to make sure you kind of like do the best you can um and while i was kind of doing all that i just felt like i had so much stuff so yeah i did sell two bags back in february um it was just kind of like time to sell those bags um and it made sense to just like sell them before the trip versus like afterwards um, and I do kind of like curate my collection once in a while, so this isn't like a new thing. Um, but even though I try to keep on top of like decluttering and curating my collection, I still felt like I had a lot. Um, and the thing is, once you start like decluttering stuff, um, I don't know, it's kind of like you just want to do more of it. 
like it, it feels good to declutter um so i wasn't just like decluttering like luxury items but also like things around my home too and i feel like that is just like a general trend in a way that people are moving in because of like everything that is going on in the world so i get it in a way but for me personally it's not all or nothing um even though i am like decluttering stuff i'm never going to you know like completely do away with my entire collection i think in like one of my um videos towards the beginning of the year i was like i'm never going to like completely stop enjoying my luxury items i'm never going to completely stop you know looking at new collections that come out i'm never going to stop completely buying luxury items altogether it's not like an all or nothing type of thing for me because i've enjoyed you know like luxury items even prior to like being on social media, having my channel, or even like if you look slightly earlier than that, even prior to me like watching other people's YouTube videos, I have enjoyed luxury items. So it's not something that I'm ever going to like completely do away with. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on in the video, but I see why it might seem kind of not genuine when people are watching you know like a youtuber's video where they're like suddenly getting rid of everything you start to kind of like question did they ever like the stuff to begin with or was it just like that was what was popular so that's what they latched on to i will say though that even though you know like i haven't completely lost interest in like luxury i think my interest has shifted and changed and it's not really the direction that i feel like most people are moving in um so i always say that i really have no interest in accumulating a bunch of Hermes items with the intention of getting a bag like i have a few things from them like here and there but most of the stuff i just bought on their website you know i didn't establish any relationship with a sales associate or anything like that so you know like maybe in some people's eyes those were kind of like purchases where i just like wasted my money because it's not getting me anywhere closer to a bag but whatever i just kind of buy what i want from the brand um and i feel like i kind of have a lot of chanel and i still do enjoy chanel i still look at their new collections and maybe i'll like get something here and there but interestingly enough the two most recent bags that i purchased um one of them is from louis vuitton and one of them is from fendi and then there were two more that were prior to that that were both longchamp bags and some people would say that's like a step down or like even multiple step downs but i just kind of buy what i like you know but i am aware that what excites me is not really what excites other people um and it's not really what other people seem to want to watch and it's also not what other people seem to be talking about either so you know um one hand i'm not really watching as much luxury content anymore on the other hand it's a little bit discouraging to be like making these videos um and they just don't really do well because they're not like trending topics and i'm not making these videos because i think it's going to bring me like fame and fortune at the same time you know like making a video takes a lot of effort from like brainstorming to really like putting together somewhat of a script filming editing uploading the video all of that takes time and you know even if we're just talking about like a video getting like for example like a thousand views versus like five thousand views that makes a difference <laughs> so yeah it's hard to kind of find the motivation to make videos sometimes and back to the topic of whether youtubers are genuine or not in their content and what they say um and i feel like this is something new that has come up in like maybe the past week or two um so i know like jerusha from jerusha couture has talked about it and also melinda from lux purse love has also talked about it about how there is this aspect of youtube that has become 
just like strictly business and professional and that spark that genuine love for like making youtube videos and content is kind of like missing and like as a viewer you kind of feel like it's missing sometimes and a big part of that is related to like sponsorships and like collaborations and how sometimes you view people's content and you're just like i don't think they're using those products or those services or whatever in real life i have definitely felt that way about some people you know talking about certain products or whatever in their videos um but at the same time like i try to remind myself that you know what people show on these videos is just like a very small portion of their life maybe they're using it off screen but you know who really knows definitely as a viewer you have to judge for yourself whether you feel like people are being you know honest and genuine on screen or not um i just have to say from like the creator you know youtuber perspective that like i said making these videos takes a lot of time and you really don't earn much money from like ad revenue from these videos so if you know like a product is something that i actually like if it makes sense if i feel like it makes sense then i don't really see the harm of adding it into my videos like as long as it makes sense for the video as long as it's not something that's like so out of left field that it's like it has nothing to do with the channel and the content whatsoever then you know i don't really see the harm in adding it and you know if the viewers you know if they don't they're not interested in seeing that content they can just skip forward into the video exit out of the video altogether um but yeah i just aim to be like honest and genuine with what i present um and two people could be you know advertising the same product and one person could be totally like honest about it whereas the other person isn't um so you know in a case like that just because one person's not honest it doesn't apply to every single person and also i feel like as long as you know everything is disclosed properly um then that's part of the honesty too and if someone doesn't feel like watching a certain video then that's totally within their own right you know no one's forcing them to but what i will never understand is why people like hate watch something i think that is really like the most toxic part of social media and i feel like those of us that are like in this luxury space definitely get that toxic reaction from people more often than maybe like other areas of social media um and you know like if you have nothing nice to say just how about like don't say it it's a very classic concept and i just I will never understand why there is like so much judgment, so much assumptions being made, just toxic behavior, general negativity um, on social media. I feel like, you know, people are saying things anonymously behind the screen so they can do whatever they want. It definitely takes guts to put yourself out there and I feel like I've definitely developed thicker skin um since i've been making youtube videos but yeah basically being away from it all for like three months or whatever length of time it's been has kind of been like a nice weight lifted off my shoulders in a way um but still i do really enjoy making these videos i love chatting with you guys and i love this kind of like friendship we've built like over the past like four years that i've been on youtube but yeah i'm hoping to go back to being consistent with my videos here just talking about the topics that i personally want to talk about and hopefully some of you guys will stick around to watch these videos if you also enjoy those topics those are my thoughts on what's been going on with the luxury community and youtube and even like social media in general um i don't usually talk about this kind of stuff um on my channel um i kind of try to stay away from like drama as much as possible and i'll just kind of like do my videos hopefully they're like educational in a way um that's kind of like ultimately 
I want to say like my goal with my videos um but yeah I think like all of this is kind of contributed um and piled up over time and kind of led to and contributed to my um break from YouTube so I just wanted to mention it um and yeah we're going to go back to making videos, releasing videos, hopefully once a week. That's what I used to do. So I hope you guys stick around for more of my videos and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.